November 3, Victor Charlie, the wind is 300 at 15, runway 35 at golf, clear for takeoff, turn left heading 300 on departure. Turn left, 300 on departure, clear for takeoff, runway 35. And you're turning left on the runway, Victor Charlie, hold your position, cancel takeoff clearance. Or Victor Charlie, can you just turn and face northbound runway 35, please? Okay, turning northbound. November 3, Victor Charlie, fly runway heading runway 35 at golf, clear for takeoff, wind 30017 northbound. So I'm pointed right now at 30 degrees. You wanted me to be, was my takeoff directly in front of me? What I'm bothered by, could I taxi back to golf, please? November 3, Victor Charlie, just hold short of 35 at golf and uh, just let me know if you need any assistance or if you're just ready for departure. I guess what I'm confused about is, it's my impression sitting here that 3-5 is to my left. Is that correct? Straight ahead. It'd be a right turn. You're going to be departing to the north. Okay. I see what you're saying now. I'm sorry. So I'm going to go straight forward and make a right-hand turn. And that's runway 3-5. Hey guys, Tarek Merriface, and welcome to Mayday Talk. Today's episode was actually from a video that my friend sent to me on Facebook. So I'm really grateful for that. Thanks, Danny. It was a really good video to review. First off, well done to both the pilot and the controller for really sorting out the situation quite well. Okay, so what is the situation? So the pilot is ready to depart from runway 35 from Philadelphia International Airport when he starts aligning up a bit, well, anywhere except in the direction of the runway. And the controller stops him and helps him redirect himself into the correct direction, sort out where he's meant to be, and then allows the pilot to take off on the correct runway. So, well done to the controller for being really patient and helping out the pilot, and well done to the pilot for not being embarrassed to ask for help and for what he needed in order to help him regain the situational awareness that he lost. Now the real question is, why did he lose his situational awareness? The first thing I'd say is, it's probably unfamiliarity with the airport. This seems to be a general consensus wherever I see. The pilot was taxiing around a big international airport he was not familiar with and ended up getting confused, something that happens all the time. Another less likely uh, scenario is fatigue. The pilot was fatigued and thus made a mistake and didn't realize it and couldn't sort himself out. And the reason I thought about fatigue is the voice. His voice sounds really tired. Just listen up. So I'm pointed right now at 30 degrees. You wanted me to be... Was my takeoff directly in front of me? The thing is, though, I don't think that's really the case. Because if you look at the way the pilot behaves, the actions he performs whilst talking to the air traffic controller, it's quite unlikely that he's fatigued. So I think he's quite on top of his game. He just lost... He just got quite confused, basically and the controller helped him get back in line. All right, so what are the lessons we can learn from this? First thing we can learn is that situational awareness is really easy to lose. It's a very, very volatile thing and we have to always be paying attention in order not to lose it. How can we do that? Well, one thing we can do is by putting the heading bug on the direction of the active runway. That way, when you're about to depart and you line up to the runway, you can see that orange little bug in the direction that you're about to take off. If it's not there, then you're obviously on the wrong runway. The next thing you could do is keep the airport charts handy. You got the ground movement charts at your side, that way you can consult it all the time. It's really useful so you don't get lost. You can consult it every now and again in a long taxi uh, taxiway just so you know what's coming up next. You should be looking like, what, there's another uh, cross intersection coming up? Perfect, it's there. I'm going in the right direction, that kind of stuff. And finally, something else I would say is that it's a good idea to try and plan the taxi route. What do I mean by that? I just mean that you as a pilot study the chart, get familiar with the airport ground movement charts so that you know a little bit what the airport is like to begin with, and then, you plan out the most likely route that ATC is going to give you. That way, it's already there in your mind. And even if it's slightly different, it's not a big deal. You just need to make slight modifications to the route you planned. If the route ends up being drastically different than what you originally planned, no worries. Try to follow it, and if you end up getting lost or are unsure, 
don't be don't be afraid to ask for for um, taxiing instructions. That's what the air traffic controllers are there for. Well, I'm Tarek Merface. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any comments about this video, feel free to put it in the comment section below. Like like it if you liked it and anything else you want to tell me again in the comment section send me a video if you want me to review it i'm Tarek merface i'll see you guys next time and happy flying do you spend long hours in front of the pc monitor gaming flying on flight simulator or simply just working from home or at the office well chances are you've already suffered those pesky headaches and insomnia induced by that screen exposure well you can say no more using the no scope gaming glasses these glasses are tinted and help filter out the blue light, which is the cause behind these headaches and insomnia. If you really want one of these, and I really recommend them, all you have to do is click on the link in the description below. Apart from avoiding headaches, you'll look pretty darn cool with those on.